All right, so the last video was sort of a fun facts about matrices or some some a little bit of linear algebra. Um, this video is going to be a little more about linear algebra, and we're going to figure out how to solve for eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. Um, and just like the roots of the characteristic equation gave us the key to solving second-order differential equations, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are going to be our key to solving systems. All right, so let's do a definition here first of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, and really what the definition boils down to is A times, I'm going to do this in a different color, V is equal to um, lambda times V. And this lambda in this definition, so lambda uh, is a scalar, so meaning it's some number. So it's a number. Um, and this is called the eigenvalue. The V is uh, the corresponding vector. corresponding vector, and A is the matrix. So A is some um, matrix. Um, there are multiple eigenvalues for a single matrix. Um, and so, for instance, a 2 by 2 matrix has two eigenvalues. Values. A uh, 3 by 3 will have three eigenvalues, um, etc. And then each one of those has a corresponding vector that goes along with this equation. Um, so, how to find them? That says find them. <laughs> um, is first, what you want to do is find the determinant of a minus lambda times i. And so that is, um, that should look sort of familiar. So really this is, involves a couple steps. Um, you need to find a minus lambda i, find that matrix first, and then find the determinant of that. Then what you want to do is set it equal to zero. So set the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero, and then solve for the lambdas. So this allows you to solve for those eigenvalues. These are the eigenvalues we just found. And then for each eigenvalue, so there's going to be number three you're going to do multiple times. So for each lambda, um, what you want to do is solve uh, a minus lambda i times the vector, set that equal to the zero vector, so that is not the number zero, that is a vector with a bunch of zeros in it, um, for the simplest for the simplest vector v that you can find. Um, there are infinitely many correct answers here, so word of warning. There are infinitely many correct, correct v's. They all are going to be multiples of each other, so there definitely is kind of a pattern there, um, but there are infinitely many correct ones. All right, let's do some examples. So we're going to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and let me just give you the matrix A. Let's do this for the matrix 2, negative 5, 3, negative 6. So the first thing that I said is we want to find the determinant, so I'm going to put this in absolute values, of A minus lambda I. And in the video before this, when we found A minus lambda I, it subtracted lambda from the diagonal. So the upper left we would subtract lambda, and the lower right where you're going to subtract lambda. 
All right, now that determinant, we multiply down 2 minus lambda times negative 6 minus lambda minus the other diagonal, so that's minus a negative 15. So this is equal to, I'm going to multiply it all out, we've got a lambda squared, then we've got a positive 6 lambda and a negative 2 lambda, so it looks like that's going to be a plus 4 lambda, and minus 12 and plus 15, so plus 3. So there's the first step, finding the determinant of a minus lambda i. I'm going to set that equal to 0, so I'm in the second step right now and then solve. So it looks like I've got a factorable equation here, lambda plus 3 and lambda plus 1. And so lambda is going to equal negative 3 and lambda is equal to negative 1. All right, so there are our two eigenvalues. So notice this was a um, a 2 by 2 matrix, and so the eigenvalues, there's two of them. One is negative 3 and one is negative 1. All right, so now for the eigenvectors. So I'm going to take lambda equals negative 3, and I'm going to plug it into a minus lambda i. I'm going to multiply that by a vector. I'm going to set it equal to the zero vector, and then really it's this vector right in there that we're looking for. All right, so first thing it says to do here in this equation is to really find a minus lambda i. This is going to be a separate matrix for this eigenvalue. So I'm going to take this eigenvalue and plug it in for lambda up here in a minus lambda i. So in the upper left, I get 2 minus a negative 3, so that's a 5. The upper right is negative 5, the lower right is 3, and the lower, I think I just said something wrong, the lower left is 3, and the lower right is negative 6 minus a negative 3, so that would be a negative 3. Now I'm going to multiply this by a vector. Um, I usually like to use x's and y's for my vector. So what I'm doing here is I'm just saying that vector v is equal to some x and some y. And then I'm going to set this equal to the zero vector, the appropriate zero vector. And so that because this is a 2 by 2, the appropriate zero vector is going to be 0, 0. All right, um, let me multiply the left-hand side. And this is going to give me two different equations. 5x minus 5y is equal to 0 is kind of the top equation because I multiply that top row by the vector and it gives me 5x minus 5y and then on the top on the other side I have 0. I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. So bottom row by that column 3x minus 3y is going to equal the bottom 0. So 3x minus 3y equals 0. Now the directions I gave you are in the steps on the, on the last slide were to choose the easiest vector. So really what we need to do is look at this and pick an x and pick a y that's going to work. That is not 0, 0. I'm going to write that right now in red. I should have written it on the other slide. Don't pick... 0, 0 for your eigenvector. That's really important. Um, and the reason that that's important is these are going to lead to solutions. And we want linearly independent solutions. And 0, 0 is dependent. It's a multiple because it's a 0 times anything. So that one never works for us. We want to pick something not 0, 0. So it looks like, if we kind of look at these two equations, it looks like 1, 1 is going to work in both of them. Because if I've got 5 minus 5, that's 0. If I have 3 minus 3, that's 0. Now, another word of warning here. If numbers do not work in both of these, something's wrong and you've made an algebra error. So it's kind of nice. This is a double check to make sure that you found the right eigenvalues. Because if you didn't, it'll come through right here. And the vector will not work for both equations. All right, the next eigenvector is negative 1. So let's plug that into a minus lambda i up here. So in the upper left, we're going to have 2 minus a negative 1, that's 3. 
lower left is 3, and then in the lower right we've got negative 6 minus a negative 1, so that's negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. And just note it's really good that those two things are the same, because it really means that you would pick the same thing for either, either equation, you're going to get the same equations. So I multiply by x, y. Again, this is going to be a different x, y. It's a different vector, but I just still use x and y. They're just random variables in here. And set it equal to the zero vector. So I'm going to multiply the top row by x, y. So 3x minus 5y equals zero. I'm going to multiply the second row by that column. And I'm not even going to write it down because it's the exact same thing. 3x minus 5y equals zero. And now I just need to pick a vector. So the vector I would pick for this one is 5, negative 3. What I really like to do is sort of pick the opposite number that's out in front. So because 5 is out in front of y, I'm going to pick it for x. And because 3 is out in front of x, I'm going to pick 3 for y. Um, and then I double check my signs and I can see I've actually made a mistake in here. 3 times 5 is 15, and negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15, and positive 15 plus positive 15 is 30, not 0. So what I need to do, is, and hopefully my eraser will work, um, or maybe, oh, there we go, I'll just undo it and rewrite it. Alright, so my vector I'm going to pick is going to be 5, 3, not 5, negative 3. That negative did not work. All right, so my eigenvalue and eigenvector pairs, lambda equals negative 3 goes with the vector 1, 1, and lambda equals negative 1 goes with the vector 5, 3. Let me do one more example uh, because I want to do an example with complex eigenvalues, eigenvalues with imaginary numbers in there. So let's look at the matrix negative 6, negative 5, 5, 2. All right, so uh, we're going to find the determinant of a minus lambda i. So that's subtracting lambda down the diagonal. The determinant is negative 6 minus lambda times 2 minus lambda uh, minus, and then it looks like the other diagonal is negative 5, so that's going to be plus 25. Multiply everything out, we've got a lambda squared. We've got a minus 2 lambda and a plus 6 lambda, so that looks like plus 4 lambda. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. 25 minus 12 is 13. Set that equal to 0. That is not factorable, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Negative b, so negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 4 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 13, all over 2 times a, which is 1. So this is going to be negative 2, and then plus or minus. Now I've got a 4 in there. So one of these 4s and one of these 4s is going to cancel with that 2. Because if I factor those out, then I've got square root of 4, which is 2. And what that leaves me underneath that root is 4 minus, because I factored out one of the 4s from the 4 squared, factored out the second 4, that leaves me a 4 minus 13. So 4 minus 13 is negative 9, so that's going to be plus or minus 3i. All right, so I'm going to take an eigenvalue. There's two of them, one with the plus, one with the minus. So let's use negative 2 plus 3i. And remember, we're going to plug that back into a minus lambda i here. So I'm finding the eigenvector right now. So I've got negative 6 minus a negative 2. So that's negative 4. Four, and then I'm subtracting the eigenvalues, so minus 3i, and a negative 5, positive 5, 2, minus a negative 2, so that's positive 4, minus 3i. 
Let's multiply that by xy, set it equal to zero. And let's write out the equations. Negative four minus three i times x minus five y is equal to zero and five x plus four minus three i times y is equal to zero. Now the complex ones are a little bit harder because it's not obvious that a single x and y that you pick is gonna work for both of these equations. Um, so I just usually pick one of them. So let's say that I pick this one and I'm gonna go with my vector for that one. And so remember that for my vector, I usually like to pick the opposite things. Um, I'd like to make my y what is out in front of x, but I'd like to make it positive. And that's only because it's easier to write than negative four minus three i. I don't know, this is all just preference. So for my y, I'm going to pick positive four plus three i, and that means for my x, I need to pick negative five. So if I put negative five right here, then that makes everything here positive. Then I've got a minus, five and something positive. So I've got that subtraction in there. I was kind of double checking myself right there, making sure it, the signs actually worked. All right, now let me show you why this works in the second equation. So this is my check right here. Um, so to check this, I'm gonna take that x, which was negative five plus four minus three i, times the y that I chose, four plus three i, and I'm gonna see if that is actually equal to zero. So I've got negative 25, then I've got to multiply this out. So four times four is 16. Then I've got negative three times four i, so that's minus 12 i. Then I've got a four times a three, so that's a plus 12 i. Hey, those cancel, that's kinda of nice. And then I've got a negative three times a negative three, and so that is a minus nine times i squared. We're still seeing if this is equal to zero. Don't forget, um, where do I want to write this? I'm gonna write this way up here in the upper right hand corner. The square root of negative one is equal to i, and so that means that i squared is equal to negative one. All right, so I've got negative 25 plus 16, that's 12i, and negative 12i cancel, and then i squared is negative one, so that's plus nine, and then 16 plus nine is 25, so sure enough, it equals zero. So notice that checking that this works in both equations is a little bit more complicated. So that takes a little longer for these complex roots, but here's the nice part. I'm gonna mark that this eigenvalue negative two plus three i goes with this eigenvector. The other eigenvector, minus three i, is the conjugate of this first one, meaning only the sign of the imaginary part is changed, and it's the same with the eigenvector. So everything that's real keeps its sign, everything that's imaginary changes, and I'm done. So you don't actually have to carry through all the calculations for the second eigenvalue. So it may be more complicated to check the first one, but then the second one is really easy. Um, and I can give you a really quick uh, reason why that, um, why this guy is negative. All right, so let's say that we've got minus, whoops, I'm gonna use a color here, minus three i instead of plus three i. So that would change that to a plus, and that to a plus, so that would be a plus, and that would be a plus. And then when we go to change the eigenvalue, it changes the sign of just that imaginary part. Okay, I think that's it for eigenvalues and eigenvectors.